the wildest, most magical thing happened the other night. I can't even really explain it. It was New Year's Eve. I had finally finished making episode number eight. I thought the work was done, but then just as I sank into the bath, I began to cry and shake uncontrollably. I was saying things. My skin was tingling all over. Everything came flapping out and screaming like bats from my past. Memories, traumas, connections, characters. It was like a message from God, a direct download from my dusty resurrected soul or unconscious, a solar eclipse slapping me in the face. I rushed out of the bath, dripping wet, grabbed a pen and paper, and got back in, scribbling away the dreams flashing before my eyes. I was transported into this other world where fiction and reality meet. My life and dreams became one. I awoke an hour later, and in front of me was this written recording of what I had seen. It was like an allegory of my life, a gift of self-understanding to myself, understanding induced by crying, screaming, talking to myself, trauma release. And maybe that's why I wrote the last episode in the first place. Deep inside, my own trauma was begging to get out. Those words that wrote themselves, I've already shared with some friends and family, and now I want to share them with you. This will help you understand more about me and some of the unconscious reasons for why this podcast even exists. Here goes uh, episode number nine, my trauma release religious experience. (laughs) 2022, the year that killed my mother and choked my brother into hell, has closed her tired eyes. Never have I felt so shaken yet alive. I am me again. The shattered glass of my loved one's souls has cut me open. It hurt. I thought I cried. That is until tonight, the best New Year's Eve of my life. I was hungry. I was satisfied. Finally, the feeling that I have returned back home. Yet I am alone. In my 10 square foot Osaka apartment. Bawling in the bathtub the way I used to as a child. The ghosts exited through my bloodshot eyes and trembling body. The pen is my teddy bear. I didn't want to take a bath, I just wanted my bear. But I wasn't crying because I missed him. I needed him to help me catch this flock of birds. When they gushed out of me, they flipped me inside out. The strange world I found myself in was one I used to know. Where words have wings and you're never alone. I used to play here as a child catching lizards and frogs, and then in college, writing papers on Heidegger and Kant. Philosophy was my first love, because it saw me, and I saw it. We spoke the same language, and played the same games. Together, we were aliens on an upside-down planet. We didn't need anyone else. They didn't seem to want us anyway. I finally had a teacher and friend. It felt like my first kiss. I was a real boy. She held my hand, taught me how to ride a pen. The ink burst out like flames. It had the ferocity of a dragon. What the hell had I gotten myself into? I mumbled under my breath. Shh, she said. I am taking you home. We shot through the dark and returned to the light. I saw Prancer and Dancer and Santa swimming in the sky. They waved to me and said I was a good boy. I smiled because for the first time in my life, I believed it. My snot tear covered lips were stuck on repeat, playing four tracks that I could not delete. Leave me alone. I'm tired. I don't want to bother you. I'm sorry. 
Distant echoes from a child that looked like me, trapped in a cave, screaming to be seen. Twisting, haunted, wind-up toys about to burst. Then a dragon came in, seemed to make matters worse. He roared and shouted, shook everything loose, ripped me open and brought me back home. Korea? Japan? Alcohol? Women? It was all just a dream. Yes, I'm oversharing. Clawing myself out from beneath a world of undersharing. Going up for breath. Soaking in the sun. Reconnecting to my soul and hopping back on my dragon. I missed you, good friend. I'm sorry I left. Left? He belched. You've just been sitting there. And your pie is getting cold. Pie? I remember pie. Oh, and it's okay. I I like cold pie. I, I don't want to bother you. And anyway, I'm used to it. Cold pie, my tail. I'm not gonna have you freezing to death again. The dragon whispered out of fire, just big enough for me. I cooked my onigiris on it. They were still in my pocket. Maybe it wasn't a dream, but this feels so real. When I write is when I come to life. Whether hiding in books or blasting through my ink wand, words are the only things that have always been there for me. When times are good, they leave me alone and let me play. I abandon them, but they do not complain. And when the cold winter strikes and I'm shivering, scared all alone, they come back to me with the dragon who breathes a big fiery hug into me. Popping words through my head. Pretty birds leaving their cage, flying back to their nest. Me snapping pictures as they fade away. I want to remember. I want to know who I am and what this world is. Writing is the camera with my favorite lens. I lost it. Forgot about it. Then my mom died. And my brother, the only human I've ever really loved, went homeless. He tumbled down a spider hole. I don't know where he is. Someone turned off the lights didn't see me there. I want out of this cold factory. They hid my bear. The storm then screeched and creaked to a stop. It ripped open a colorful sky. I remembered I could fly. Floating up, I danced with my old bird friends. They were having babies and said, We need you, Michael. You can work here. Live in the sky. What do you say? And what are you doing way down there? Uh, I I don't know. I I was lost. Guess I was looking for something or playing some game, I said. Well, did you find it? Was it game fun? Can we play? I guess it was fun, but different than I thought, and there are no winners. It's just a game. We play games up here, too. Do you want to try one? Sure. It's called Catch the Clouds. Whoever catches the most clouds after 60 years wins. Oh, that's kind of like the game that I was playing, but... I don't want to play anymore. Um, then how about instead we go for a fly? Yeah, I like that. I haven't flown in forever. What? You used to love to fly. You were the best flyer in the whole big sky. Yeah, I guess I was pretty good, but I also have legs and the creatures down there aren't like you. They're fun, but I don't know. When I'm down there, I forget about up here. Crack, 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 crack! The bird squeaked in laughter. How could you forget? The sky is all around you. 
Well, I said, they have these drinks and foods that make you forget. Bright lights and sounds that promise you clouds. Pretty horses that are fun to chase. And you get price tickets for sitting around wasting away your days. It sounds okay. If you don't want your tickets, we'll take them. But your wings are too light. Your nest is too small. The things would do you no good. They all soon would fall. What a bunch of junk then! And don't they know that the clown game is only for children? Everybody knows you can't catch a clown. That's what I figured out. But to be fair, from down there, everything looks like solid objects. It's only after you reach something that it disappears. So, why don't you stay up here? We love to have you around. We miss you. Think of pet dragon who flies without fear. He's not my pet. He's my friend. And he's the one who taught me how to fly. If it wasn't for him, I would have never met you guys. Then tell him. Stealing our eggs, but do say hello. His fire blows life into your eggs, gives you your wings, allows you to roam, and here he is. We're all back home. These birds, this story started flying out of me as I sank into my first bath in days. Hungry, tired, but my reward pizza would have to wait. It was my reward to myself for being a good boy, for uploading a new podcast episode. That was the hike from hell, but perhaps the best week of my life. Well, to be honest, my dragon did most of the work. I hadn't hung out with him since college. We used to stay up all night, me catching birds as he blew fire into them. We'd fly through the sky, forgetting that either one of us were alone. I so missed that feeling of being me, frolicking free, way up high. I have been frozen in a silly dance for about 15 years. Down here on the ground, my pie, meanwhile, getting cold. Now that I am eating it under this warm vanilla sky by a campfire with my best friend, I am at peace. The dragon only flew back to me because it was a dark, stormy night. Our mom died, and the screams woke him up. He didn't push me to write, but he blew birds into my ears. They're flying around, then woke me up. I didn't know what they wanted. I couldn't even understand them at first. I forgot what these little things even were. And then it all came flooding back. My days at BC and Berkeley, where I played with these birds nonstop. I would sometimes spend weeks just trying to catch one of them. I was in my own world and I loved it. It was the most meaningful period of my life. That is, until now, this past year. Seeing my withered mom laying there in the coffin, carrying her with my brothers, but the big brother missing. Instead, there was the dragon handing me my old teddy bear. He blew a gentle flame through the sky and lit up my world. I knew I could fly. I knew I could write. But I was so busy in the fearful day-to-day -day life. I wanted out. I was done chasing clouds. Yet I didn't know where to go. I had no home. The vanilla sky over my mom's closed eyes looked at me. Its face was covered in birds. I felt a quake coming from underneath me and it was the dragon. We were soaring once again. He dropped me off 
at a strange, familiar-looking place, and there sat my teddy bear, my bathtub, and pie. I woke up in my childhood bed, crying. I'm tired. I'm tired of working a meaningless job where I don't have time to ride my dragon and the birds are left to die. I'm tired of the stupid clouds and horses and numbing drinks. I'm tired of being an alien with nothing inside on an alien planet where I can only hide. I'm tired, I'm tired, I want to go home. Leave me alone, bosses and friends. The real friends understand, but there are so few of them. Maybe it's because I've been living a lie, wearing this costume that needs to die. So I must write to at least have my dragon. And maybe then, when I show my real skin, there will be a new friend. I don't want to bother you, because I don't want you to bother me. We are living in a world full of distractions. I am getting knocked off my dragon constantly, sometimes jumping off of him myself, chasing shiny clouds. And I know you are too. I feel your pain. You don't need more. I'll leave you alone. Still, I'm sorry for bothering you. The dragon gave me words in a podcast when my world was dying. He said it might help. Reteach me how to fly. He knew I missed home, so he gave me a lift. He spit eight episodes out of my mouth and said that's not it. That's a real friend. One who helps you when you're down. Does not give you his drugs, but gives you back your bear who lets you frown. Just like with those birds that looks like ghosts. I have been hiding my podcast, afraid it's a joke. I didn't want to bother you, annoy anyone with another ad. Yet here I am, for which I am sad, trembling about to run away, as usually I want to be left alone. For that's when the dragon makes himself visible, and I have a friend. I was too tired to show you my birds because I felt maybe they weren't pretty enough and that you might shoot them down and scare away the dragon but I talked to him tonight well he talked to me first that made me cry cry out all the birds that I've locked up for years they flew past midnight and into the new year then the dragon came back and said have no fear These two are your friends. Trust them. They will not kill your birds. And the birds also need friends. They want out of the house and to play in the clouds. To swim in books and out of mouths. I hope my story here inspires you a little bit to let yourself cry. Stuck to those tears, you will find not only thorns, but also flowers, beautiful stories and ideas, and I want to hear them. We all want to. Also, I hate asking people to share or rate this podcast, but I got to do it sometimes. Please, just, if you can, I just want more time to be able to keep doing this. Much love. You are never alone.